Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Oh, it's chilly in here. I'm hearing comments in the back, but okay. So the Biden-Harris administration's response and recovery efforts continue to deliver for the people of North Carolina, Florida, and all communities affected by Hurricanes Helene and Milton. Federal assistance for communities affected by Hurricanes Helene and Milton has surpassed $1.8 billion. Over the weekend, the president visited Florida to personally survey the damage caused by Milton, speak with families affected by the storm, and meet with state and local officials to ensure they were getting the resources they need. And this afternoon at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell will hold her daily press briefing to provide further details on our efforts to help communities respond, recover, and rebuild in the wake of these disasters. As the President has said, we are in this for the long haul and we will be there as long as it takes. That said, we need Congress to do its job. Yesterday, you heard from the President that the Small Business Administration's Disaster Loan Program, which is a critical lifeline to small businesses, homeowners, renters affected by, by disasters, has been exhausted. Americans should continue to apply for these loans, and SBA will continue to process them and disperse assistance as soon as Congress does its job and provides the needed funding. Tomorrow, President Biden will travel to Berlin, Germany, where he will meet with German leaders, President Steinmeier and, Pre and, and Chancellor Schultz, underscoring the strong relationship that the United States shares with Germany and the full range of global issues that we are tackling together. The close relationship between President Biden and Chancellor Schultz have built has have built has been critical to helping us make progress on behalf of the American people and to making the world a safer place. We have worked together closely to strengthen our economies for both our people and provide critical support for Ukraine as it continues to defend itself against Russian aggression as Germany has been the second largest provider of aid to Ukraine after the United States. Chancellor Schultz's bold decision to participate in the prisoner swap this this summer as you all know which he did as president Biden, at president biden's request was vital to returning wrongfully detained americans including evan gershkovich and paul whelan and germans to their families and we need to continue to work closely together to defend democratic values around the world on that note, President Biden will speak with President Zelensky shortly, if not already, and will announce a significant new security assistance package for Ukraine today as part of our ongoing effort to surge U.S. support to Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression. The two leaders also will discuss the leader-level Ukraine defense contact group, which will, hold, which will be held next month to continue to get Ukraine the support it needs to prevail in this conflict. We will have a readout of that call soon as we, as well as more details on the military aid package. Some additional news, in the first week of December, the President will travel to Angola where he will celebrate the transformation of the U.S.-Angola relationship, recognize Angola's role as a strategic, part, strategic partner and regional leader, and meet with President Lorenzo about ways to increase our collaboration on security, health, and economic partnerships. The value of strong alliances and partnerships in the defense of freedom has never resonated more in Europe, in Africa, and beyond. These visits demonstrate the President's unwavering commitment to revitalize these relationships for our shared security and prosperity. With that, Amr, kick it off to you. Yeah, um, on the Germany trip uh, tomorrow, when will he be coming back? And I'm presuming the um, conversation with uh, President Zelensky today, um, does that obviate the need for them to meet while he's in Europe? Well, um, that they're not going to have an opportunity to meet while he is in Europe, and this is one of the reasons the president is calling him ahead of time. Um, what I will say is we'll certainly have more details on the trip, 
uh, in the next several hours on what that looks like, what tomorrow is going to look like in the specifics of, of, uh, of, of the President's engagement in Germany next tomorrow, the next two days. And can I ask, um, with concerns of the uh, Secret Service being so stretched right now and the various security needs with the two assassination attempts, has the president considered maybe putting this trip off um, until after um, election day, or perhaps even dialing back um, some of the Delaware travel, um, just to, to, to help lighten the load on the Secret Service? So what I will say this, I'm not going to get into uh, the specifics of the Secret Service and and um, and how it. Uh, does its business in protecting, uh, obviously, the principles. That's not something for me to speak to from here. Uh, what I will say is that uh, the president believes that this uh, is felt very strongly about this trip, about one of our uh, partners, allies, that has been a, a steadfast, uh, certainly in partnership with, as it relates to Ukraine's defense. Uh, and the president really wanted to make sure to go to Germany to thank uh, Chancellor Schultz directly. Uh, and so that was one of the reasons to do that trip. I'm not going to get into specifics of, of um, Secret Service and, uh, and how they move forward and how they go about uh, protecting the principles. That's not something that I'm going to speak from here. Just one last one. Sure. Uh, President Biden uh, yesterday um, spoke of Harris cutting her own path yeah. as president if she's elected. Does he feel he's held her back? No, not at all. Look, the president has always been, I'm going to be, you know, not going to speak to politics from here, but what I can say more broadly is that every, every president has uh, the opportunity to cut their own path. And the president has been really clear about passing the torch uh, and seeing uh, Vice President Harris uh, as a leader from day one, on day one. And, um, and he understands how this all works, right? He said this yesterday as well. He was loyal to uh, Barack Obama, uh, but he also got an opportunity to cut his own path as president. And so, and that's what he believes Kamala is going to do. And that's her, that's his words, right? When calling her Kamala, the vice president. And so she's been loyal to him, and this is something that he shared, and he understands that she will cut her own path. And I think that's just the way it goes, right? I think that's the process that we're seeing right now, that we're living it, that you all are covering every day uh, since the president decided to uh, step aside from this election and pass the torch uh, to the vice president. Uh, and so I think that's what you're hearing from this president. He's incredibly proud of her. Uh, he has supported her from day one. He has said many times the best decision that he made in 2020 was uh, asking her to be uh, his running mate. Okay, Nancy. Thanks, Kareem. A um, couple questions about this letter from the Biden administration to the Israeli government uh, suggesting that U.S. aid to Israel may be at risk if they don't change their posture on humanitarian aid into Gaza. Um, uh, is there anything that we should know about the timing of this letter? Yeah. So look, I'm going to take a step back just for a second because, and I know my uh, my colleagues over at National Security Council uh, spoke to this, uh, if not yesterday, certainly over the past couple of days. And look, the administration did something similar back in April, uh, and uh, and that that was received. That letter that we did back in April was received uh, with a constructive response uh, from the Israelis. And so this is very similar. Uh, what we have seen, the, the trigger, the reason why we're doing this is we have seen a decrease uh, in aid, in very important critical aid into Gaza. And so we sent out the letter from obviously the Department of Defense and also the State Department uh, that went to, the, to um, both secretaries' counterparts. Uh, and so we're having those discussions. Uh, I would speak to them. I would speak to the DOD and State Department on their timing. Uh, but it is certainly connected to what we have seen, which is a decrease of humanitarian aid in Gaza. And so we wanted to address that uh, with Israel. Have you gotten any response from the Israeli government to this letter or any sign yeah. that they are taking it seriously? So I don't have anything right now to preview or to announce or to, to lay out for you at this time. What I can say is the last time we did this back in April, we did see a const constructive response, uh, and so that's what we want to see this time around. Is the administration really willing to halt military aid to Israel if you don't see a significant improvement in humanitarian aid flowing to Gaza? I'm not going to get into hypotheticals from here. Like I said, we did it back in April. 
this sent a letter, uh, very similar, a, a, letter, a letter from both the State Department and the Department of Defense. We got a constructive response. That's what we're hoping to see. We wanted to address this. This is connected to a decrease of humanitarian assistance, aid that is very, very much needed in Gaza, as you all know. And so that's what, that this is a, a we've done this before, it's worked, and so we're, we're doing this again. And so we want to see a constructive response. Kids. Just one follow-up there. Yeah. If Israelis have 30 days to sort of make changes, a 30-day deadline. That's after the election. Doesn't that take some of the bite out of this ultimatum? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into um, a timeline from here. Uh, I'm not gonna get a, into to, into those types of specifics. I would refer you to the State Department and Department of Defense. I think what's important is what's important here is to not forget we've done this before back in April. We want we've seen a decrease of aid, and we certainly uh, want to make sure that. That, that is addressed. Uh, that is why the letter went out. Uh, that's why we're talking, uh, we're having those conversations with the Israelis. And so I'm going to leave it there. Yesterday, former President Trump seemed to leave open the possibility that he has, in fact, talked to Vladimir Putin since leaving office. What does the White House make of that? I I'm not going to get into uh, uh, specifics about conversations with uh, with world leaders from here, I'm not going to get into that still specifics from here at Does all. Does the White House have any evidence that that could be true? I, I don't. I think I've answered this question before. We don't have any any anything to confirm uh, that that's that specific uh, statement from the former president. Uh, I just don't have anything else to add. I can ask sure. domestically. Yeah. President Obama seemed to indicate that he was worried. Some voters might be trying to make excuses for not voting for a woman. I've heard that myself from a lot of voters out on the campaign trail. I understand you can't talk about politics <laughs> in the campaign, but have you seen moments or do you believe that that this has been a unique challenge for Vice President Harris in her role as Vice President? I mean, look, here's the thing. Here's what I can't say. Both this president and this vice president are very much proud of what they have been able to deliver for the black community and many other communities, historic, uh, historic results. Uh, obviously, there's always more work to be done, and that's something that we say, whether it's about the economy, whether it's about health care, there's always more work to be done. Uh, but we're proud of what we have been able to see when we think about uh, in record wealth, including like, obviously record wealth, employment, small businesses. Uh, we've seen a boost uh, in small business applications within uh, the black community and other, just more broadly, not just the black community. And so we understand there's more work to be done. We're certainly gonna continue to do that work. And that's what I can speak to. And that is something that I know both this president and the vice president are very proud of doing. Do you think she's had to overcome sexism as the first female vice president? Look, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to uh, get into it from here. Um, what I can say is that we are all very proud of what the vice president has been able to accomplish with this president as a critical partner over the past four years. And you don't ha just have to look at her career as um, almost four years, I should say, uh, as vice president. But you look at her uh, record as senator, uh, as attorney general of California. Uh, I think it's been, she's had an impressive record and, um, you know, and she's done that uh, uh, with uh, everything, all the, the headwinds that come at her, she's been able to get that done. Uh, is, you were talking about uh, the just to go back to the Germany trip. Yeah. Uh, is there any update on the Ramstein summit that was? Uh, is it postponed? Is it canceled? Or? I don't have an update for you on that. I'm, I'm sh I'll be sure to check with the team, but I just don't have anything on that. Is the president expected to have any meetings with any other foreign leaders uh, during the trip? We'll certainly have more to share. Obviously, a big part of this uh, meeting of this trip uh, travel that he's doing is going to be around Ukraine. Uh, the continuing support of Ukraine of um, uh, Ukrainians as they continue uh, certainly uh, to beat back Russia's aggression and and we've been very proud the president has been very proud uh, to do that and continue and obviously uh, one of the reasons we're going to Germany is I, as I mentioned uh, which uh, Chancellor Schultz uh, as a partner in that um, and so we'll certainly will have more to share uh, but just a little bit more uh, broadly I would state I mentioned uh, Russia's war in Ukraine, uh, managing the crisis in the Middle East, uh, maintaining stability in the Indo-Pacific region, strengthening the transatlantic alliance, illustrating that the relationship in, is both dynamic uh, and also enduring. And so uh, I think that's important to note. Uh, and the president, as I stated at the top, he wanted to make this trip. This is a trip that he wanted to do uh, to thank uh, the chancellor for his support 
Uh, and so that's what you're going to see from the two leaders, and we'll certainly have more to share. I will also uh, state that at 4 o'clock, National Security Council will have a press call, so certainly you should join that. Uh, just one more to follow yeah. up on Amr's question on the President's comments about the Vice President last night. Um, the, Ron Klain told, told us in August that the White House could have done more to promote the Vice President. Um, he said, quote, we were all united behind the idea she should be successful. We just didn't find the path to do it. Does the President agree? What I will say is, uh, and I think the, certainly the first part of your quote I, is, is something that I know to be true. Like the President has always wanted the Vice President to be successful, and she has been successful. Uh, and he could not be more proud of her as he is today. I think what she, what he laid out yesterday, uh, obviously that was a political uh, event that he, that he spoke at, but I think uh, lays out his thinking, uh, how he sees uh, the Vice President, uh, not just now, but moving forward uh, in what she's trying to accomplish at this moment. Uh, and um, and I think she has had uh, a lot of successes to point to over the last three and a half years. And I also stated her time, her record as a senator, her record as attorney general, as district uh, attorney in, in San Francisco. She's had an <coughs> impressive record. Um, and so uh, I, anything else beyond that, I certainly will leave it to the vice president and her team to speak specifically on. Okay. Uh, just back to Ukraine. Yeah. It's been more than a month now since the president told us that there were discussions about allowing Ukraine to fire long-range missiles deeper into Russian territory. Is he heading into this conversation with Zelensky today and, and to this trip to Germany with a decision made on that? Uh, what I will say is, uh, look, the United States policy on that uh, has not changed. It has not changed. But I think what's important here is that we are committed. We continue to be committed uh, to Ukraine, uh, to the Ukrainians having everything that it needs, especially on the battleground as they're fighting against Russia's aggression. That is our commitment. That is what you, we, I just made an announcement, right, just moments ago about an assistance, how much more we're going to be providing uh, as, as, uh, as we understand what's needed uh, on the ground, on the battlefield. Uh, and so, President's probably talking to the President Zelensky right now. Uh, we are going to continue to show that support, uh, and I just don't have anything uh, to say. Our policy has not changed beyond that. So he's decided against allowing that capability. Uh, look, I'll say this. In May, the President directed his team to ensure, right, that Ukraine is able to use U.S. supplied weapons for cross-border strikes so Ukraine can hit back against Russia, uh, Russian forces that are, that are attacking them or preparing to attack them as part of their current Russian offense. Uh, it's, it's common sense, right? It's common sense that they should be able to hit back against what's hitting them and uh, to deny Russian forces that are using staging locations just across the border a safe haven. That was what we were able to do back in, bay, in May. Our policy with respect, with respect to prohibiting uh, the use of attackums or long-range uh, strikes inside of Russia has not changed. That is not going to change. It has not changed at this, at this moment. Don't have anything else to preview, but we will continue to have conversations with the Ukrainians providing what they, what they need on the, battle, uh, on the battlefield. That is a commitment. We want to uh, be there for the Ukrainians as they continue to beat back Russia's aggression. All right. And on the SBA funding, it sounded last week when the president was talking about this that he wanted Congress to come back early to pass more funding for the Small Business Administration, but he didn't mention that in his statement last night. Is he, has he given up on Well, what Congress I will say, what he did mention in his statement uh, last night is that Speaker Johnson has said uh, and is committed uh, and promised that uh, he was going to uh, fund, uh, promised that he was going to fund not just that, but other disaster programs. Uh, and so he said that it will be replenished by Congress. And so that's the commitment that he made. That's what we want to see. Uh, and we want to also make sure that people uh, out there who need who need uh, these particular resources, they continue to apply for loans, and the SBA is going to continue to process uh, those applications. But Speaker Johnson made a commitment, uh, and certainly uh, we want to see that commitment follow through. Okay. Got it, Danny. Thanks, um, Back to the Middle East, um, the, the U.S., specifically the State Department, said yesterday that it was uh, the U.S. was opposed to the Israeli uh, bombing of Beirut as it was being carried out at the moment. Hours after that, uh, there were fresh Israeli airstrikes on, on southern Beirut. Again, what gives you any confidence that Prime Minister Netanyahu is listening to what Washington is asking him to do? So look, and you're right, we uh, have told Israel directly that we oppose any Israeli's campaign 
uh, to certainly uh, of near daily strikes in densely populated area in Beirut. We, you are correct. That is something that we have been very clear about. Uh, we, we also understand that uh, uh, what they're conducting, the operations that they're conducting uh, to destroy uh, Hezbollah infrastructure is, is targeted. Uh, and so we'll continue to have those conversations uh, with the Israeli government. Uh, and that is something that we will continue to do. Uh, and we have been really clear. It is critical. It is critical that these operations be conducted in a way, in a way that does not threaten the lives of civilians. Conversations that we will continue to have with the Israeli government. Uh, and let's not forget UN peacekeepers and also members of the Lebanese armed forces. And so we've been clear. Uh, we're going to continue to have those diplomatic discussions with Israelis. And in the White House's view, how did the yesterday's strikes, uh, you know, what category did they fall into? Acceptable or? I, look, I'm not going to get into uh, characterizing each of these strikes. It's not what I'm going to do from here. We've been very clear what we want to see. Uh, we've been very clear uh, about that from here, you, as you stated, uh, from uh, the State Department and Department of Defense as well. And we will continue to have these discussions. Okay. Thanks so much, Karine. Um, does the White House have any indication or explanation on why the tension is, is escalating in the Korean Peninsula? And is the White House concerned about so that, that last part? The Korea, the Peninsula, Korea, the tension growing over there. I mean, look. Uh, look, obviously, uh, we're always going to have concerns, and we're always going to watch and monitor closely. Uh, don't have anything specific to read out on uh, the current uh, uh, current uh, situation there. We are uh, going to always, as I said, monitor, watch closely, uh, and certainly uh, be in coordination with our South Korean allies. Uh, and so, look, we're going to also continue to urge the North North Korea to reduce tensions. Uh, and, and seize any actions that could increase uh, the risk of conflict. And that is something that we've been pretty consistent here. Uh, a follow-up, and then I have a, one more. Um, because there are reports that North Korea is sending soldiers to fight uh, with Russia in, in Ukraine. Some are suggesting that there are around three to 7,000 soldiers already in a few miles from the uh, Ukrainian border. Uh, does the White House have any response or concern about it? Look, we've always said we've been concerned uh, when we've always asked about um, uh, about other countries providing aid or assistance uh, to Russia. We've been very clear about that. Uh, this is why the president took it very seriously on making making sure that NATO was stronger uh, and uh, and bringing more than 50 countries together uh, to make sure that Ukrainians had the support that they need. Uh, you just heard me uh, speak about uh, an assistance that another assistance package that we are going to be uh, speaking more about delivering, and that is a conversation that the pres President Biden is having with President Zelensky, and that is going to be a really important part of the conversation that the president has when he's in Germany. So. We're going to continue to provide assistance, show our support for Ukraine, stand by the Ukrainians. Uh, and so that's going to be our focus in the next couple of days and continued focus, obviously, since the past almost two years now. And just uh, the last one, you were announcing international trips uh, for the next uh, few yeah. months. Is uh, President Biden going to Brazil for the G20? And uh, does the White House believe that Vladimir Putin should be arrested if he goes to Brazil? For the I, G20? I don't have anything to share on either of those uh, questions that you asked me. Okay, Jared. Um, on the call with Zelensky, I know earlier today uh, Zelensky uh, made public parts of that victory plan. I assume he'd already shared it with, with President Biden, but one of those uh, elements is uh, an immediate invitation to NATO. Does the White House, the President, have a response to, to that proposal? Look, what I will say, and I've been very clear about this, uh, look, we're going to let we're going to let the Ukrainians speak to their victory plan. That's their plan. We'll let them speak to it. Uh, what we're going to continue to do is show our support for the Ukrainians on the battlefield as they continue to uh, beat back Russia's aggression. Uh, I don't have anything else to share beyond that, uh, but uh, we'll let them speak to their plan directly. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Karine. Yesterday, uh, President Biden talked about uh, Trump's uh, rally in which he stood up on the, the stage and listened to various uh, musical tunes and, and said uh, the former president has, quote, snapped and become unhinged. Can you elaborate what, what he's concerned about there? Does he have concerns that Trump lacks the mental fitness to, to be able to go back I, I mean, to the White House? I, I don't have anything to add. I think the president was very clear uh, on what he felt and saw uh, and was uh, 
and was sharing with all of you. I don't think there's anything more to feel, add. Does he have concerns about his, the I, former president's I, mental I don't have anything else to add. I think the president speaks loud and clear uh, and directly for himself, and so I'd let his words stand. Okay. Senator Rick Scott and Senator Rubio have proposed $20 billion to replenish the disaster relief fund. Has the president seen that proposal? Would he sign it if it did pass? So look, as you know, when we, when we tried to do originally the CR, uh, we had a robust, uh, robust uh, component in that CR uh, to make sure that uh, the disaster relief fund uh, was replenished. Uh, that didn't go through. We were disappointed by that, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and so what we want to see, I'm not going to put a number to it. That is something that's going to be worked out. Uh, what we want to see is Congress, when they come back, uh, to actually do that, to actually replenish uh, the disaster relief fund. It's important to do so. Uh, while we have the fundings right now uh, to do the work that FEMA needs to do, that this administration needs to do to impacted areas, uh, we know that there's going to be a shortfall and we're going to need more funding. I'm not going to get to a, a number. Uh, I have not spoken to the president or the Office of Ledge Affairs about this particular uh, proposal that has been brought forth, uh, but the president has been very clear. I just talked about the SBA uh, and how that that funding is now exhausted. The Speaker made a promise, the Speaker Johnson made a promise that when Congress returns, that they're going to replenish uh, the disaster relief fund and also make sure that CBA has what it needs uh, to really address the needs of, uh, of Americans who have been impacted in, in, on the ground. Is there a timeline for when FEMA would know how much the administration wants to use? Say that one more time. Is there a timeline for when FEMA would have an estimate for how so much? So I would I would work? refer you directly to FEMA about that specific timeline, uh, a number that's needed. What we are very clear about is we need to make sure that we have funding, additional funding for the disaster relief fund. That's why we included it in the CR. As you know, it was a robust number. We wanted to see that get through. It did not get through, and we we are seeing uh, these storms come coming through and what they're doing and how they're devastating uh, areas. The president was able to survey, obviously, what uh, occurred in, in, uh, in Florida after Hurricane Milton. And so we want to make sure those funds are there. Speaker Johnson made a promise. Uh, he said that that was going to happen, so that's what we want to see. I know I think we have to start uh, wrapping up soon. Um, just to follow up on the president's comments about the vice president cutting her own path if elected, I know the two of them speak regularly, but just wondering if the two have specifically had conversations about how she would do that if elected, whether the president is offering advice or whether she's asked for guidance in that arena? So I don't have any details to, spe to their specific conversations. As you know, uh, the president and vice president work closely together, as I just talked about the two hurricanes that came through. Uh, you saw them. Uh, working side by side in dealing with the impacts of the hurricane and making sure that we were responding uh, to folks on the ground. Um, and look, uh, they're going to continue to work closely together. Uh, the president knows what it's like to be the vice president uh, and knows what it takes to be the vice president and what's needed there. And so he is, is certainly very proud of the work that she's been able to do. I'm not going to get into details or specifics of co private conversations that they have. Good, Annie. Thanks so much. Um, the automaker Stellantis has said that they are um, considering expanding a factory in Mexico. I'm wondering if the White House has any response to this possibility um, and whether you can address concerns that uh, domestic jobs may be lost or moved overseas. So look, last year, as you know, we applauded UAW and also Stellantis for coming together uh, after hard, good faith, which is what we always love to see, uh, negotiations, and also re reaching a historic uh, agreement uh, that secured record raises, greater retirement security, and investment in the future. Uh, and so that included a commitment to reopen and expand production in communities that were devastated by previous uh, plant closures. And so, look, what we want to see is Stellantis certainly deliver on those commitments. Uh, to the UAW and to the communities. Uh, and so, uh, and not just any communities, but communities that have long supported uh, the industry. That's what we want to see. Uh, and so we want Slantis to keep their commitment. Uh, again, we were very proud to see uh, that uh, very good faith negotiation that occurred and what was delivered. Uh, and so that's what we want to see at the end of the day. I know we have to go. Okay, uh, and we have to go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, good. Okay.